I want to give a special shout out to my patrons, to my Biblio Spren, Biblio Sworn, and Bibliomancers. Thank you so much for supporting my hobby and passion even more. It means a lot to me. Hi everyone, Patek here. Today's video will be a book review and it will be for Babel by R.F. Kuang. And I think Babel was absolutely impressive ambitious and intelligently crafted. As unbelievable as it sounds, I do honestly believe that RF Kuang has actually triumphed over the Poppy War trilogy, which I love so much just with this one book. Babel or the Necessity of Violence, an arcane history of Oxford Translators' Revolution, is RF Kuang's newest novel, and unlike the Poppy War trilogy, which I consider as a grim dark fantasy trilogy, Babel is a standalone dark academia novel. Also, because this is the longest book title that I've ever witnessed, to make this review more digestible, I am going to simply call it as Babel. Babel was, and still is, one of my most anticipated release of the year. The cover art by Nico Delord for the US and UK edition looks spectacular, and I think many of you know that I am a fan of the Poppy War trilogy. I am proud to say that I was one of the first reviewers for RF Kuang's debut, The Poppy War, and upon finishing The Poppy War, I mentioned in my review that RF Kuang will be one of the queens of modern fantasy. The Dragon Republic and the Burning God proved that notion, and with Babel, RF Kuang proved once again that she is indeed one of the best fantasy authors to appear within the past five years. The story in Babel is told almost exclusively from the perspective of Robin Swift. In 1828, Robin Swift lost his last surviving family due to cholera, and he was then brought to London by the mysterious Professor Lovell. Professor Lovell brought Robin to train him in Latin, Ancient Greek, and Chinese, even though Chinese is his first language. In preparation for the day, he will enroll in Oxford University's prestigious Royal Institute of Translation, also known as Babel. Babel is the world center of translation and, more importantly, of silver working, the art of manifesting the meaning lost in translation through enchanted silver bars to magical effect. Silver working has made the British Empire unparalleled in power, and Babel's research in foreign languages serves the empire's quest to colonize everything it encounters. Oxford, the city of dreaming spires, feels like a fairy tale for Robin. It is a utopia dedicated to the pursuit of knowledge, and knowledge means power. But for Robin, a Chinese boy raised in Britain, this means inevitably betraying his motherland. Robin has to decide whether he should continue to pursue knowledge and stay in Babel, or will he choose to side with the shadowy Hermes Society, an organization dedicated to sabotaging the silver working, which in essence defies Babel. One of the many passages in this novel that I can relate to heavily is this. Languages are easier to forget than you imagine. Once you stop living in the world of Chinese, you stop thinking in Chinese. Words and phrases you think are carved into your bones can disappear in no time. That quote speaks the truth. For those of you who don't know, Indonesia is my first language, Chinese Mandarin is my second language, and English is my third language. Due to my lack usage of the Mandarin, it honestly feels like English has transformed into my second language now. <laughs> As you can probably guess from the title and premise of Babel, colonialism, racism, languages, translations, identities, necessities of violence, and finding a place to belong are some of the heaviest themes of Babel. Babel. Regardless of whether you love the Poppy War trilogy or Babel more, I am filled with confidence in saying that RF Kuang has outdone herself with this novel. There is a lot to unpack within this standalone novel. Each of the themes I mentioned earlier was discussed with ruthless exploration. And I believe that any reader reading Babel could actually use the novel to write their own dissertation on one or more chosen themes within this novel. It felt crystal clear that RF Kuang has done a myriad of research and she put all of them onto the pages of Babel. As a reader who speaks multiple languages, I've been reading, writing, thinking, and speaking in two or sometimes three languages every day. It won't come as a surprise that I have an interest in linguistic, etymology, and of course, Babel has them all. Done in a meticulous and addictive fashion, taking place in a historical fantasy setting, Babel never ceases to raise thought-provoking questions and discuss important issues with its readers. What if the city of dreaming spires is, in reality, a tower leading them to an inevitable nightmare through the illusion of grandeur and greatness? Babel is not as grim as the Poppy War trilogy. It also has a comparatively more likable main character, which I will get into soon. And these elements made the events and developments in Babel more relatable. Look, I could talk about the plot all day long if I want to, but it is quite frankly impossible to discuss in more detail what made the teams executed in Babel so cleverly done without going into spoiler territory. The book isn't out yet for more than two months, and I prefer leaving the best of the plot in Babel to future readers to find out for themselves. Instead, I will now proceed to elaborate upon the characters of Babel and their characterizations. One of the most magnificent things about Babel is its characterizations, especially for Robin Swift. 
In one book, less than 700 pages long, R.F. Kuang managed to meticulously introduce and develop Robin Swift. His character development and story arc felt immense. Seriously, by the end of the novel, try to look back to the beginning of the novel and you will see how far Robin Swift has changed. Plus, his character development never felt forced. His grief, rage, dilemma, struggles, kindness, and relatively brief moments of happiness felt so genuine, and I, several times throughout the novel, truly empathized with him. The numbers of challenges, jealousy, avarice, manipulation, and domination he has to defeat were just staggering. Fortunately, Robin was not alone in facing the cruelties pushed upon him. Accompanying him were three main supporting characters, Rami, Lady, and Victor. This group of friends, these four characters, are individuals with distinct and different personalities and yet circumstances allowed them to eagerly trust one another without any interrogations. Will they live happily ever after? Well, that's for you to find out. But do know this is a novel by R.F. Kuang, and it is not a spoiler to say that the author is going to put her characters through physically and mentally crushing pain. As the characters wait for dawn to visit them after a night of explosive discord and conflicts, I waited with bated breath with them. I was so invested in the characters, especially Robin and Victor, and I consider it a testament to how well written this book was that, among many other factors, all characters in this standalone novel felt so distinctive and compelling. There is also a feeling of satisfaction in reading Kuang's novels from her debut in publication order. Kuang is an author that keeps getting better and better with each new book, and Babel is R.F. Kuang at the top of her game. The narrative has the potential to strike a various range of emotions, and it is delivered mercilessly. One out of many examples, and I'm going to be vague about this. There was a virtuous character who has their kindness tested too far, and we readers get to witness how deadly the malice that kindness can conjure from this. I felt distraught and conflicted by this in a good way. But at the same time, I also felt sad and, to a level, rewarded by the turn of events. The prose continuously flows well and the author successfully nailed the character's development. This doesn't mean I fully agree with the character's actions and motivation, but I understood them. The devastations wrought to counter colonialism portrayed were bloody and vicious, and I found the narrative hard to put down. Babel asks its readers whether there is indeed morality and necessity in violence, or is it all an unnecessary and endless deadly cycle with no way out. Lastly, I need to mention that I have never been to Oxford or the United Kingdom. In fact, I have never been outside of Asia. It remains one of my goals to visit the United Kingdom and other countries outside Asia. This is to say that Babel did not only immerse me in its memorable story, but it made me want to visit London even more. It's such a vividly portrayed novel with incredible world building and layered histories. Yes, Babel takes place in our world, but adding the magic of silver making that required memories and the proficiency in languages and translations to the narrative provided a totally brilliant result in enriching the depth and complexities of the world. I seem to now have a newfound extra appreciation for translators too. Take a look at this passage. I think translation can be much harder than original composition in many ways. The poet is free to say whatever he likes, you see. He can choose from any number of linguistic tricks in the language he's composing in. Word choice, word order, sound. They all matter, and without any one of them, the whole thing falls apart. That's why Shelley writes that translating poetry is about as wise as casting a violet into a crucible. So the translator needs to be translator, literary critic, and poet all at once. He must read the original well enough to understand all the machinery at play, to convey its meaning with as much accuracy as possible, then rearrange the translated meaning into an aesthetically pleasing structure in the target language that, by his judgment, matches the original. The poet runs untrammeled across the meadow. The translator dances in shackles. Isn't that so accurate and profound? I actually highlighted more passages in Babel compared to the entire Poppy War trilogy. Babel lived up to my high expectation. It is one of the best standalone novels that I've read. It is one of the best books of the year. It is a victory for literature, and I think this is what every dark academia novel should strive to be. Paying homage to the importance of languages, translations, identity, and ethnicities, Babel is destined to be one of the most important works of the year. I think this August will be a very big month for fantasy. Not only Babel is the third book that I rated with a full 5 out of 5 stars rating this year so far, but it will also be released in August, just one week after the first binding by R.R. Virdi, which was the second novel that I rated with a full 5 out of 5 stars rating this year. With the Poppy World Trilogy and Babel as her bibliography so far, I feel assured in declaring R.F. Kuang as one of my favorite authors now.
A marvelous one of fantasy standalone is frequently difficult to find, and I think this is one out of many other reasons why you should read Babel as soon as possible. Where do Babel stands in my best book of the year list? I will let you know at the end of the month. So yeah, that's it for me today. That's my review for Babel by RF Kuang. Do let me know whether you are looking forward to reading this book or not, and do let me know whether you love the Puppy War trilogy or not. As always, thank you so much for watching, and thank you for your support. Bye-bye. And lastly, I want to say thank you once again to all my patrons who keep on supporting me.